Good afternoon everyone. I'm going to do uh, something a little bit different today. We're going to do some furniture. And I'm going to show you how to create this uh, antique finish uh, using some paint. And um, give me just a sec. I'll show you what this piece of uh, furniture looks like right now. Okay, so here's the, this is the little piece I'm going to be doing. Um, I found this at a uh, Goodwill, I think, for about four bucks. I'm not sure what it was, but it's just a little, cute little storage cabinet, like so. And I'm just going to be giving it an antique finish. And let me show you what tools you're going to need. You're going to need some uh, crackle medium. I like this one. This was my favorite. It's uh, you can get it at Lowe's. It's about fifteen bucks for the jug lasts a long time. You're going to need three different colors of of uh, chalk paint and I mix my own. Um, I've got a tan color, a blue color, and then I've got this cream color. And my recipe is uh, about four ounces of paint, one tablespoon of plaster of Paris, and um, depending on how thin or thick you want the paint, anywhere from one to four tablespoons of water. And I'll show you the different thicknesses because these, these three paints are, are different mixtures. You're going to need some Vaseline and you're going to need a glaze. Um, this is just uh, glazing medium mixed with some craft paint that I made up. And uh, the glazing medium that I use, excuse me, is again another one. I just picked this one up at Home Depot. Um, that's one of the ones that you can use, and I just mixed it about three parts glaze to one part paint, and that's how you can make a glazing medium. Uh, you'll also need a scraper. This is a little cheap scraper I got at a yard sale. You'll need a wet rag, and you need a plastic bag. This is just my recycled bag from, obviously, Walgreens. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get started. Of course, in my list of tools, I forgot to mention that you actually need um, some paint brushes. <laughs> um, they can be crappy paint brushes. The crappier, the better, because you want this to be a an old finish. Um, they don't have to be dry because your paint has water in it anyway. So um, the first thing we're going to do, we're not going to sand. We're not going to prepare. We're just going to use chalk paint. That's why I love chalk paint. I mix them up in peanut butter jars. Um, because they keep better that way. The first color you put on is going to be uh, approximately four ounces of paint, one tablespoon of plaster of Paris, and this one has four tablespoons of water, so it's pretty thin. And of course I can't open it. That's how tightly it seals. There we go. And we are going to just plop this on here. Now this piece of wood has a, looks like a polyurethane finish on it, and I'm not sanding it. I'm just using this chalk paint. And then we're just going to let it dry for a little bit. Now here, I'm in Arizona, so things dry pretty quickly. Um, but we don't want it to completely dry. So we're going to take a pause and come right back. Okay, so what I want to show you is you're going to let this dry most of the way. You want this paint to be dry to the touch. Uh, except for the high spots. You see how you can kind of see where some of the thicker spots of paint are still a little wet? 
that's where you want to get to where it's most of it's dry but you still have a few high spots that are just a little bit wet okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take our scraper and we're going to take a paper towel and uh, this scraper I actually sharpened it with my Dremel so it was a little bit thinner and we're just going to take our scraper and just kind of pull some of that paint off that's not quite dry yet I don't care which way you go because again we want this to look old and beat up so I'm just going to pull this off like so with our scraper you can go both ways if you want. Try it on, pull it on. And you can see, despite the fact that this piece has a has a obviously a polyurethane or shellac type of finish, this chalk paint is still sticking, and it's not even completely dry yet, and it's sticking. I love chalk paint. There's no prepping. Okay. Okay, I like that. I think that's good. And what I'm going to do is just let it dry for just a few more minutes. Of course, that will depend on where you're at. But I'm just going to let it cure just a little bit longer before we move on to the next step. Okay, so our next step is going to be using the uh, Crackle Medium. And I've just got a little plastic cup. I'm going to shake it up. Just pour a little bit in my cup. I don't want to over pour because I don't want to have to try and pour it back in. I'd rather pour too little than too much. And we're just going to take this and kind of Put it in various spots, not cover the whole thing. Because if you look at something that is truly old, you'll find that the crackle is usually not consistent throughout the entire piece. And then we're going to let that dry. A few things to point out about this crackle medium too. The thicker you put it on, the bigger your cracks will be. If you put it on thin, you'll get little cracks. So if you want the big cracks, you just glob it on there. If you want the little cracks, just kind of spread it out and brush it nice and thin. Okay, we've let this medium dry and it needs to be dry to the touch. It's not tacky, it's really, really dry. Um, so that's where you want to get it to and then move on to the next step. Now this is um, this is the main color that I want to see on my pieces, the middle color. And this is a chalk paint. Again, it's about four ounces of paint, uh, one tablespoon of plaster of Paris, and this one only has two tablespoons of water. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker than the first layer. I love these peanut butter jars because then I can just do this and mix it all up again. Of course, then I have to try and open it. Okay, we're going to take this color of paint and we are going to put it on here, nice and thick. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be straight. The thing with the crackle medium though is you don't want to go over the same place twice once the paint has started to dry. And again, here in Arizona that happens really quickly so you can kind of see the crackles are already starting. And we're just going to let that go. What I'm going to do here is take the camera off and show you the crackles start to form. So you can see that these crackles are already starting and it's been less than a minute. 
Again, you can see the different sizes. It just depends on how thick you put the medium on there. So over here in the corner, it's kind of thin. But these big cracks you can see are because I put the crackle medium on really, really thick. And you can see how fast this is drying and how quickly the cracks are forming in this um, paint. So what we're going to do with this is, again, we're going to get it just, so it's just dry, I mean just dry. Um, even if there's a few tiny spots that are still wet, that's okay, but mostly dry. Okay, again, we've got this mostly dry to the touch, and I'm just going to lightly scrape a little bit of this off. I don't want to do it too heavy, not like the last time, because that paint dried a lot quicker. This will take longer to dry because of the crackle medium. So very lightly you're going to do some scraping. If you want to see that other color coming through. Basically I want to scrape mostly where I didn't put the crackle medium. And you see some of it's the wood and some of it's that tan color coming through, so you're getting both. Bike scratched me. That's about where you want to do it. Just scrape off until you're happy with what you see. It's all your personal taste. You do want to kind of focus on the areas that would naturally get wear and tear on them if this were a truly aged piece, which would be on the corners. This front piece would probably get a lot of wear and tear, so I'm going to scrape a lot off of that. I'm kind of liking that. Get rid of all the little chips. And then let it dry some more. Okay, after this is completely dry, you want to just take a rag and rub off all the loose paint, all the little bumps of paint that are uh, still on here. Get it fairly smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just rub off all those loose flecks. And then, here we go. Okay, so now because this is the, the color I want to see the most of, um, I'm going to do this next step that most of my paint is not going to stick. And I just take these little plastic bags and I just kind of dip them in the Vaseline and just kind of rub it on the project here. And it's, it's pretty good coverage because like I said, I, I don't want that much of the blue covered up. So that's pretty good. And then I'm going to take my final color. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it on top of here. This uh, this color I mixed about four ounces of paint. 
again, one tablespoon of plaster of Paris. And uh, this one only has one tablespoon of water in it because I want the thickness to kind of compensate for the Vaseline that I've put on the piece. Again, just doesn't have to be anything fancy, just blob it on there. Like so. And again, you're just going to let it dry so that most of it, not all of it, most of it is just dry to the touch. Okay, it looks to me about like this paint is about half and half on the dry wet side and again I this is not my main color so I want to take most of it off. So we're again just pulling out the scraper and just taking most of this paint off and what it does is the scraper just grabs that wherever the Vaseline was and it just takes the paint off with it. Globs of that. could have put a little bit more Vaseline on here, but that's okay. And I want to see more of, more of the blue coming through. Let's rub some off with the paper towel. Also grabs a lot of that Vaseline. I think I'm going to let my blue paint dry a little bit longer before I move on because I'm getting more of it coming off than I want. You can see it's getting a lot of the blue back and I want some more of that blue paint on there. So but look at how rustic that looks, how shabby that looks. Just awesome. Yeah, I'm going to let my blue paint dry a little bit more because I don't think it's dry enough to, uh, to move on because I'm getting too much of my blue coming up. So we'll let it dry a little bit longer and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, the last step after your piece has had uh, a couple of really good days to dry. You don't want to do this too early. Um, you want to get the extra Vaseline off. So what you're going to do is take a, a pretty light cleaner. Um, got the Wintex multi-surface, Wintex, Windex. Uh, I like this one because it's not so harsh that it's going to take any of your paint off. And just give it a light spritz on the whole piece. Wipe it down lightly with your paper towel. See if you've got still a little bit of grease left on there. So I'm going to do it one more time. Find a clean edge of your paper towel. Otherwise, you're just moving the petroleum jelly around on the piece. 
And then just do that lightly a couple times until you get all that extra pulling jelly off. Yeah, that feels good and clean. And just do that on your whole piece. Again, give it a couple days to dry because you don't want to be rubbing your finish off. Um, and that, that takes the rest of that uh, Vaseline off of there. And uh, you still keep your finish. Okay, here's the last and final step. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mix up a glaze. I've used uh, the Bare uh, Foam Glaze Medium. You can get that at Home Depot. And I've mixed it with a tiny bit of craft paint, dark color of craft paint. And it's probably about three to one, three parts glaze, one part paint. And then you're going to need uh, a wet rag and you're going to need your craft paintbrush. So all we're going to do is we're going to take some of this glaze and we're just going to work it in to all the little corners, all the little places where dirt would gather over the years. And I'm also going to go over this little Mod Podgy piece that I put on here. And if you guys are interested, make a comment and I'll do a little video on how to do the distressed, aged look on the Mod Podge. Again, I'm just going to work this in a little bit, doesn't matter where. Put it into the little crevices. Alright, and then what we're going to do is, now depending on what kind of climate you live, if you live in a humid climate, let this sit for a minute or two without drying. You don't want it to dry. But, oops, sorry about that. I live here in Arizona, so this stuff dries almost instantly. So we're just going to take our wet rag and start wiping most of it off. And we're just going to leave some of it. We're not going to go into these crevices. We're going to just let it stay. We're just going to wipe most of it off. Some of it where it's gathering about the big globs of paint, I'm going to leave it there because, again, over the years, that's what would happen. And if some of the paint comes off, again, I don't really care because it's just more of that distressed look. See, it's flaking off right here, and I don't really care. Oops, I lost my rag. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more around my, my little Mod Podge thing here so it'll look even more old. And again, just wipe off what you want to wipe off. If you wipe off too much, just add a little more. Then I'm going to work it in to all the cracks and crevices. Because what I've done here is I wanted it to look like, like this Mod Podge was done after the, the white layer uh, like somebody had over the years decided they wanted to dress this little piece up. Leave some of that there. And so again, naturally over time the dirt and the age would stick to that piece. And I think, I think I like it that way. I think I'm about done. Again, just take off as much or as little. You can see right here I've left some of the, the glaze on here and I, I left it purposely in, you know, on the Mod Podge so that it gives it a nice little aged effect. And there's my cabinet.